नमस्कार स्पिरिचुअल डॉक्टर्स फॉर होलिस्टिक हेल्थ पर आप सभी दर्शकों का स्वागत है हम हर संडे आपके सामने एक होलिस्टिक डॉक्टर को एक्सपर्ट को लेकर आते हैं एंड लास्ट संडे ऑफ द मंथ वी ट्राई टू इनवाइट सम ग्लोबल स्पीकर एंड इसके पहले हमने कार्डियोलॉजिस्ट डॉक्टर जोल कौन को बुलाया था अर्जेंटीना के अंकोलॉजिस्ट डॉक्टर लोरा एनासी नासी आई थी क्वांटम फिजिसिस्ट डॉक्टर अमित गोस्वामी सर को हमने बुलाया था हांगकांग से डॉक्टर सुजन जैमिसन जुड़ी थी टुडे वन ऑंकोलॉजिस्ट फ्रॉम जर्मनी डॉक्टर हेनिंग सॉपे आज हमारे साथ जुड़ने वाले हैं एंड लेट मी टेल द हाउ आई गॉट कनेक्टेड विद डॉक्टर हेनिंग I am reading one uh, amazing, very powerful book, Radical Hope. Heal kitab, Doctor Sandeep, आपको याद होगी जब उसकी uh, yes. Netflix पे documentary uh, Heal नाम की है yes. और uh, वो उसकी book भी मैंने मंगाई उस पर मैंने कई सारे series of session किए उस Heal documentary में जिक्र आप आया ये Kelly Turner का one researcher who has done research for more than 10 years interviewing cancer survivors especially those cancer survivors jinhone alternative means ka use kiya by choice or jab side effect ya kisi aise karan se unhe chhodna pada conventional treatment so is radical hope mein zikr aata hai इन डॉक्टर का डॉक्टर हेनी टॉपे और पेज नंबर 83 पर ये है और इसके लिए मैं लाइन पढ़ के सुनाता हूं मतलब केली टर्नर ने ये दूसरी बुक है पहली बुक रेडिकल रिमिशन है ये कैंसर स्पेशलाइज्ड अल्टरनेटिव स्पिरिचुअल केयर पर बुक है ये Dr. Henning Sope, an integrative oncologist from Germany, known for prolonging the lives of end-stage cancer patients. Prolong prolonging lifespan of end-stage through his various healing modalities, especially power of psychoneuroimmunology (PNI). also some, sometimes it is known as pnei psycho neuro endocrinology endocrine dr laura nasi jab aayi thi to unhone bhi pnei par kafi focus kiya tha pnei especially when it comes to positive emotions there is more one more story mai cancer par kaam kar raha hu so i keep searching There is one interviewer Chris. उन्होंने डॉक्टर हेनिंग का इंटरव्यू लिया हुआ है तो वो मैंने देखा था उसकी स्क्रिप्ट मैंने पढ़ी थी और क्या बताऊ मैं डॉक्टर हेनिंग इज ए सच ए फैंटास्टिक डॉक्टर इन द इंटरव्यू विथ क्रिस वेन आई केम टू रेड द स्टेटमेंट केमोथेरेपी कैन नॉट इलिमिनेट All cancer cells. Oh my God! Such statement coming from an allopath, from a mainstream medical practitioner. He is practicing naturopathy oncology, integrative oncology for last three decades. So we will come to know some. profound experience which works which gives result dr sandeep humne spiritual doctors jo shuru jab shuru kiya tha hamara objective agenda hi yahi tha ki logo mein jo health ke liye jo fear hai jo lack of knowledge hai lack of spiritual knowledge hai usko kam karne mein hum kamyab ho jaye aur we feel that we are moving ahead 
विद गुड स्पीड हमारे ऑडियंस का नियंत्रण साथ में मिल रहा है दे डू ज्वाइन एंड इवन माई फ्रेंड राम हैज ज्वाइन फ्रॉम जर्मनी हेलो राम हेलो रंजन सर नमस्ते वेरी हैप्पी टू बी हियर डॉक्टर संदीप डॉक्टर रंजन आपने एकदम सही बात बोली जिस पर्पस के साथ में हमने स्पिरिचुअल डॉक्टर फॉर होलिस्टिक हेल्थ शुरू किया था वो पर्पस के साथ अब आगे बढ़ रहे हैं जो एम्पेरिकल स्टडीज बोलते हैं जो साइंटिफिक स्टडीज बोलते हैं उसका मतलब क्या होता है उसका मतलब ये होता है पहले हम जैसे सोचते हैं कुछ लोग सोचते हैं अरे ये तो पुरानी चीजें हैं ये तो नेचुरोपैथी क्या है काम कर सकती है नहीं कर सकती लेट्स ट्राई इट क्योंकि हम इंडिया बेस्ड ही एक विजन लेके बहुत सारे लोग चलते हैं अरे इंडियंस की थेरेपी है या इंडियन इसको यूज करते हैं इंडियन इस तरह की हीलिंग मोडलिटीज को यूज करते हैं बट एज द रिसर्च आर गोइंग ऑन पूरे दुनिया के अंदर जो रिसर्च हो रही है दुनिया के अंदर जो रिजल्ट आ रहे हैं तो पूरी दुनिया आज इस चीज को मान रही है दैट जो डॉक्टर रंजन ने बहुत ही रेडिकल बात बोली जो भी बात ब्रेकिंग बात बोली बुक से बोली दैट कीमोथेरेपी कांट किल ऑल द कैंसर सेल्स क्योंकि कैंसर सेल कंटिन्यूसली हमारी बॉडी में बनते रहते हैं हमारी इम्यूनिटी हमारे बॉडी सेल उनको वापस खत्म करते हैं सो इट्स काइंड ऑफ होम्योस्टेसिस हम एक होमोस्टेसिस के अंदर रहते हैं कोई भी केमिकल या आउटसाइड चीज हमारी बॉडी की होमोस्टेसिस को क्रिएट नहीं कर सकती हमारी बॉडी को होमोस्टेसिस क्या चीज क्रिएट कर सकती है हमारा खुद का ब्रेन हमारी खुद की इम्यूनिटी हमारा खुद का हेल्दी एंडोक्राइन सिस्टम और हमारी हेल्दी बॉडी जिसको हम बोल सकते हैं अगर हम इस चीज को रखते हैं अपने पास इस चीज के ऊपर काम करते हैं हेल्दी इमोशंस के ऊपर हेल्दी बॉडी के ऊपर हेल्दी इम्यून सिस्टम के ऊपर वो अलग अलग ढंग से कर सकते हैं हम खाने के साथ में कर सकते हैं मेडिटेशन के साथ में कर सकते हैं हम एक्सरसाइज योगा और कितने ही अलग अलग ऐसी मॉडलिटीज हैं जिसके बारे में हमने कभी सुना ही नहीं है तो जो पर्पस था हमारा स्पिरिचुअल डॉक्टर ऑफ होलिस्टिक हेल्थ का मेरे को लगता है हम उस चीज के ऊपर बहुत ही फॉर्मली आगे जा रहे हैं एंड वी आर थिंकिंग अबाउट द ग्लोबल कलेबोरेशन विद द स्पिरिचुअल डॉक्टर ऑफ होलिस्टिक हेल्थ ताकि जो डिफरेंट इंस्टीट्यूट हैं डिफरेंट स्कूल्स हैं हम उनके साथ में बात कर सके डिफरेंट हीलिंग मोडलिटीज के ऊपर काम कर सके उधर की नॉलेज इधर आ सके जो उन्होंने स्टडीज की हुई है एम्पेरिकल स्टडीज की हुई है और जो इधर की नॉलेज है डिफरेंट चीजें हैं जो लेयर बाय लेयर है वो डिफरेंट ढंग से एक तरह से कलेबोरेशन करके हम मर्ज करके नई मोडलिटीज को क्रिएट कर सके नई चीजों को सीख सके और यही पर्पज है हम हर हफ्ते हर हफ्ते बिना एक भी मिस मारे बिना भी एक सेशन मिस किए हुए हमने साल दर साल चल रहे हैं और इंडिया का ये एक ऐसा एक मात्र चैनल है जो कंटिन्यूसली इज वर्किंग एंड वर्किंग एंड वर्किंग और हर सेशन एक दूसरे से नया होता है और इस चीज के लिए जो हमारे दर्शक है हमारे साथ ही है जैसे संजना जी हैं बाकी सभी लोग जुड़ते हैं दे विल ऑल्सो एग्री विद अस डेट हर सेशन कुछ ना कुछ अलग लेके आता है ऐसा नहीं है एक सेशन हो गया और मालूम है आगे क्या चलने वाला है सो so फ्रेंड्स इसी तरह से प्यार देते रहिए हर सेशन अपने आप में एक नया है और आज का जो सेशन है वो तो बहुत ही अच्छा होने वाला है क्योंकि जैसे ही हमने बात किया डॉक्टर रंजन ने हम सेशन से पहले बात कर रहे थे आ, हम आज के जो स्पीकर हैं उनसे बात जब किया तो इतने डाउन टू अर्थ हैं इतने स्पिरिचुअल हैं इतने इंटरेक्टिव हैं उनको देने में अपनी नॉलेज को बांटने में जो खुशी मिलती है वो बहुत कम लोगों में होता है मेरे ख्याल में स्पिरिचुअलिटी का मेन जो अगर पिलर देखा जाए वो है गिविंग गिविंग हैप्पीनेस गिविंग हेल्थ गिविंग नॉलेज एक बुक का याद आ गया डॉक्टर रंजन डाई एम उस बुक में यही कहा गया है आप जब डाई आउट हैं तो आपके अंदर कुछ ऐसा बचा नहीं होना चाहिए आपने दुनिया को नहीं दिया तो आज जो हमारे स्पीकर डॉक्टर हैनिंग वो भी ऐसे डॉक्टर हैं डाई एम की तरह वो जो उनके पास है वो देना चाहते हैं वो आज सेशन से हमें क्लियर हो जाएगा जब डॉक्टर हैनिंग हमसे बात करेंगे और इंटेग्रेटिव ऑंकोलोजिस्ट ये वर्ड मेरे को बहुत आ, टच करता है मेरे को बहुत आ, प्रभावित करता है क्यों क्योंकि मेडिकल कॉलेज में डॉक्टर रंजन हमने बहुत कुछ पढ़ा है और आगे आगे बहुत लोग स्टडीज करते रहते हैं वही चीजों के ऊपर आगे जाते हैं अरे नई टेक्नोलॉजी आ गई है नया मशीन आ गया है नया रेडियो एक्टिव केमिकल आ गया है नई ड्रग आ गई है लेकिन उसके बाहर खुद से चीजों को एक्सप्लोर करना उसके ऊपर रिस्क लेना वो भी थर्टी ईयर्स पहले और उसके ऊपर रिजल्ट प्रोड्यूस करने दैट इज ए रिमार्केबल थिंग और बहुत बड़ा रिस्क होता है डॉक्टर रंजन आप जानते हैं और ये रिस्क इंडिया में बहुत सारे डॉक्टर्स ले रहे हैं मेरे ख्याल में 
डॉक्टर रंजन का नाम अगर मैं लू तो लीडिंग नाम है इसमें जो रिस्क लिया है जिन्होंने और अपना एक डिफरेंट मकाम क्रिएट कर रहे हैं इंडिया के अंदर आई कंग्रेचुलेट डॉक्टर रंजन आपको बहुत बहुत मुबारकबाद देता हूँ डॉक्टर रंजन सो वी हैव चूजन द टाइम एंजेलिक टाइम इलेवन एलेवन जस्ट टू इंडली इंडिकेट दैट देर आर इंफ्लुएंस ऑफ नंबर वाइब्रेशन एज वेल सो नाउ आई विल इन्वाइट माई फ्रेंड डॉक्टर हेनिंग ऑन स्पिरिचुअल डॉक्टर फॉर होलिस्टिक हेल्थ गुड मॉर्निंग डॉक्टर हैनिंग नमस्ते फ्रॉम इंडिया वी वेलकम यू ऑन अर प्लेटफॉर्म स्पिरिचुअल डॉक्टर फॉर होलिस्टिक हेल्थ एंड वी आर रियली रियली एक्साइटेड टूडे टू नो मोर अबाउट यू अबाउट योर वेज हाउ यू हील एंड अबाउट द इंटेग्रेटिव ऑंकोलॉजी एंड बिफोर दैट दो वी आर डिस्कसिंग इन हिंदी वी आर डिस्कसिंग दैट हाउ स्पिरिचुअल हाउ जैन हाउ how deep person you are you have taken the risk 30 years back when no one could thought of the things you are doing thank you very much dr ranjan and dr sandeep it's a great honor to speak for you and your indian audience today and i'm looking forward to this session very very much um well my journey started more than 30 years ago that is when i uh, before i got my medical license um I find myself with a lot of questions when I was a young man asking myself what am I doing here what is the purpose of my life and uh, how can I make the best out of it and it was my deep interest ever since I went to school to learn about life and life sciences but I was also interested in arts and philosophy and had different ideas what to do with my life until I found that becoming a medical doctor is what it brings everything together i can work with the artistic side of my uh of my personality but i can also study the laws of life and i hopefully can be uh at service for my fellow men so that is why i started to study medicine as a a young man at the age of 20 and ever since that uh i try to understand the interaction between spirit and matter between soul and body and how i can make the best of my life and the life of my fellow men who ask me for help when their lives are in danger and that is the topic of today uh, cancerous diseases that represent one of the major challenges of our time it is already the foremost reason why lives end sometimes as we believe too early in developed countries like canada uh, cancer is already the number one reason for too early death and um in the entire developed part of the world we count that one in three adults will sooner or later develop a cancerous disease and be challenged by that and the trend is even more uh, alarming uh the number of ca- cases affected with cancer rise by 2% a year so that the the um, unpleasant prophecy for the year 2040 is that every second adult in developed countries will be affected by a cancerous disease so we have all the reasons to uh wonder what we can do to change that trend and i hope that i can shed some light on that very complex question what to do to stay healthy and avoid the development of a cancerous disease yes dr hani very rightly said so uh, we are making our effort our small effort to make this world better by sharing by spiritual and medical knowledge so now the stage is all yours to share your work thank you very much so um for the next 45 minutes i would like to guide you and the audience through a lecture on um what cancer is how it comes about and what we can do against it so let me switch to my presentation and i hope that this works very well is my presentation on 
Not yet, sorry, just um, I have to find the right button to hear this. So do you see my presentation and my face? Good. Yeah. Yeah, well, I call it holistic cancer therapy from the beautiful Greek word holistic holos, which means everything that is. And I came to understand that we need to look at everything we do and everything we don't do if we want to understand why somebody develops cancer. And my presentation will guide us through a 12-fold field with 12 aspects that has two faces. The first phase is the beautiful one, and I call it the vitality field. And these aspects, the 12-fold vitality field, will make it understandable and usable for everybody to work on its own vitality by understanding these 12 qualities. But this phase, this field has also another phase, which is what I call the cancer attracting field. If these 12 field factors um, follow a quality that is out of balance, um, cancer will be more and more the consequence of it. And we have to understand these factors in order to reverse it. As a medical doctor, I see many patients in late stages. In stage three or four, cancer is actually what I see the most in our clinic. Stage three is cancer with metastasis and stage four is cancer with multiple metastases. And in this situation, you need to do more than to care for a good vital terrain. And what, I, what I'm going to present you at the end of my lecture are three smart anti-cancer therapies that reduce the vitality and the growth of cancer in a human body without doing too much harm to the, to the human body. And that is exactly what is missing, in my opinion, in the traditional uh, academic-based way to address cancerous diseases and to treat patients. Uh, the focus is all on the tumor and the therapies are only blocking and attacking the tumor. And nobody cares for the terrain. The naturopathic approach is interested in the, in the terrain. For thousands of years, all medicinal systems, Ayurveda medicine, Ayurveda medicine Chinese medicine, uh, herbal medicine in Europe cared for a good terrain and stimulated the self-healing capacity of the body. And this knowledge got more and more lost, especially in the last 150 years when materialism and reductionism took over. And we only are interested in cells. And today we're not even interested in cells. We are interested in molecules and receptors on top of the cells. And we have totally lost the great picture. So integrative medicine wants to bring the two worlds together, the terrain-based holistic view and the particularistic view where we need to block the growth of cancer in, in, in order to get time to work with the terrain. If a patient comes in a stage four cancer, you need to do everything you know to have a chance to reverse it. You need to attack the cancer, but please also look for a good terrain. So the, those are the two aspects, the terrain aspect and the tumor focused one. Many years ago, I guess it's more than 20 years ago, I read in a medical article in, a, in a, a medical journal that cancer cells occur in every human body all the time. And that completely changed my view on cancer. How comes cancer cells occur in every human body all the time? The number is probably some thousand cells happen to come into existence, even in my body, even today. So although I regard myself as perfectly healthy, I have to acknowledge that some cancer cells are developed in this very moment in my body. So why am I not sick? And why do I believe that I can keep my health at bay? Well, the key is, of course, the immune system. A healthy immune system eliminates the cells, obviously, the same day they occur and keep the healthy balance alive. This is what Dr. Sanjeev already mentioned in his introduction, the beautiful word of homeostasis, which is the Greek word for the balance of power in a human organism. And that again uh, was the key understanding, the key principle of health, of the definition of health in all the ancient systems. 
the balance between the different qualities of energy between kapha, uh, vata, and pitta, uh, following Ayurvedic medicine, or the qualities of fire, uh, earth, wind, and air, following uh, Greek philosophy, uh, and the origin of European medicine that comes from Hippocrates, the famous teacher, philosopher, and, and medical doctor in Greece some 2,500 years ago, defined health as the balance of power. And this concept too has got lost in the modern way doctors are trained. Uh, I do not remember one single lecture uh, in the many thousand hours I spent at med school some uh, 35 years ago when I studied medicine in Germany that anybody, any of my academic professors defined health. Health was uh, the absence of a disease. And that is of course a very uh, unsatisfactory definition. And it doesn't tell you so much, the absence of a disease. So we have to uh, understand again that health is about being in balance. So now we need to know what needs to be in balance and these are the 12 factors that I soon will show you. So my way of looking at cancer is that cancer as a disease is caused by a deep change of the biological conditions of the entire organism around it. It's not only the cell, it's the entire organism that is out of balance and the cell the cancer cell that shows up eventually as a growing lump is the consequence of a changed terrain. So if we want to cure the patient, we have to change the causes and not only to take off the, the tip of the iceberg. If you let me take that example. We know that only one sixth of the iceberg is what we see on top of, of the sea level and uh, five sixths are underneath the seawater. So we need to go to the roots, to the causes of the disease and not only chop the, the top phenomenon of the cancerous lump. If we do that and don't change the conditions, a reoccurrence is programmed. The bioterrain that I will show you includes 12 factors that cause healthy cells to transform into cancer cells and change the self-defense program of the immune system at the same time. So it, works on both sides, on the energy system of the cell and on the terrain. And if these field factors work for a too long period of time without the possibility to get back into balance, uh, I call it the cancerous field that almost attracts the disease cancer and allows the transformation step by step. And only a deep and effective change of these factors can reverse the cancerous field of the organism that suffers from cancer overgrowth and eventually activate our immune system defense against cancer again. So follow me through these 12 factors and how to change them in order to heal the organism and restore its vital field again. Because this is uh, the spiritual doctors movement, uh, and I guess my audience is interested in the spiritual aspects of the diseases, um, I have a another slide uh, about cancer as a part of the human condition that raises some deep spiritual questions. We know through cancer genetic research of the last decades that cancer is stitched into the human genome, is a part of the human condition of every human being as it exists already in a preform of so-called proto-oncogenes in our genome. And when certain stimuli switch on these proto-oncogenes, the precursors of oncogenes, cancer becomes effect. So we can say we all live with this condition on the, on the level of a possible uh, uh, condition that only needs to be activated slightly through various factors to have the disease. This means that cancer is the possibility, as a possibility is the price of a complex human body. We would not have this complex human body if we would not been exposed to the risk to develop in a cancerous way. So it's the karma of mankind to carry the preform of cancer already in our body. And what we have to do is to balance it so that it does not uh, manifest as the disease that we all fear. When cancer manifests as a visible disease, it can raise some really, really deep questions. And 
it is important to look at these questions in order to develop as a spiritual being and to take the chance of inner growth and spiritual growth from that challenge. And of course, one of the deepest questions you can raise towards yourself is why I am here? Why am I here on earth in this body? What is my life purpose? And by the way, this question was one of the healing factors that Dr. Kelly Turner mentioned or found in her field study with the interviews of many thousand people affected by cancer and what they did to in order uh, to go into this unexpected remission that she calls a radical remission. For me, the most important factor that she presents in the first book, Radical Remission, was to find one's life purpose again. People who recovered from cancer in a spectacular way that was not expected in this radical way um, where, they, where they managed to turn cancer back without using the traditional uh, oncological strategies of chemotherapy, radiation or surgery. One of the key factors that these people talked about was finding their life purpose again. So please keep that question uh, in your mind when you go through the rest of my uh, lecture. What can I gain from struggling with a cancerous disease in this life? And maybe the next question is even more important. How can I develop new spiritual skills working with the cancer challenge in my body in this life? We already mentioned uh, the, the term immune system. So I want to explain to you uh, where it comes from. The immune system, the word immune is Latin and was used in the Roman army more than 2000 years ago uh, to define a special group of special soldiers that had various duties like engineers or artillerymen or musicians or weapon instructors. Uh, and that a, a group of special soldiers who had special skills, those were called the immunes. And they also received the better pay to do this special work. So if you want to have a good immune system, you have to give your immune system a good pay. And this is what I will tell you in a few minutes. And the pay for our immune system is our lifestyle and our food and our thoughts and our emotions. The immune system is very, very complex. Every day we can learn new details about these many hundred different cells and how they work together and act together in concert like many musicians in a large orchestra. And who is the conductor of this orchestra? If you ask me, the conductor of this orchestra is my life and my lifestyle. It's everything I do and don't do. It's my thoughts, it's my beliefs, it's my emotions, it's the food I eat, it's the toxins I inhale, and it is the absence of toxins that I can excrete. So it's everything um, that modulates the immune system. And why is the immune system so important when it comes to cancer? Well, it can attack cancer and eliminate it every, every day. Again, the fact that I don't feel a lump in my, lump, my body today, that I don't have any visible symptoms of cancer is based on what you see on this picture. In the middle, the yellow uh, ball is a cancer cell. It's, the picture is uh, from an electron microscopy it's about 40,000 40, times uh, magnification. And we see the blue cells around this yellow cell that attack the cancer. Those blue cells are lymphocytes. So this happens in every human body. This is a, a real picture of the balance of cancer cells and immune cells. Um, the next slide shows you uh, two systems. To the left, the white layer of cells uh, represents a healthy tissue. And because of certain obstacles that arise and certain problems like inflammation, intoxication, physical damage, uh, some cells turn into cancer. And in this graph, they turn red. But in a healthy organism, the immune cells come and those are the saucer-like cells around and repair it. And the tissue goes back to normal and turns white again. That is the the... Uh, the left part of this picture. But when certain things 
uh, start to become more and more apparent, like toxicity, like chronic inflammation, like the lack of nutrients, the lack of self-repair energy, uh, the, the tissue uh, will not be repaired by the immune system, but turn into something cancerous that grows. And eventually, eventually, after a couple of years or three years, it grows to the size of a lump that caused the patient to go and see a doctor. And the next picture is um, a, a big macrophage that uh, eats up a cancer cell. And it's so impressive to see. This is a microscopic uh, animation. And now you see the big white cell with the dots on, the macrophage, which means big eater, the immune cell that ingests the cancer cell inside the blood vessel. This is the healing reaction we all want. This is how our body cleans up uh, our uh, system with, from the cells that invade us and uh, eventually grow into a cancerous uh, lump. So we all want to have this reaction very vividly in our organism. The question is, why has this failed and why uh, has the body lost the ability to clean itself and to regulate itself? So we need to understand how the immune system works. And a very important message to all of you who listen today is that the immune system is deeply, deeply connected to our mindset, to our feelings and to our emotions. And the last 20, 22 years of academic science have revealed how close this interaction is. And the discipline is, was already mentioned by Dr. Sandeep and Dr. Ranjan in the introduction. It's called psychoneuroimmunology. The interaction between our spirit, our mind, our beliefs, most of all, our emotions based on certain beliefs, the neurosystem with the glands in our, in our uh, brain, like the pituitary gland and the pineal gland, um, and certain structures in the lower part of the body, in the, uh, the brain, sorry, the hypothalamus and the thalamus, and how these brain structures interact with the immune system. At the University of Innsbruck in Austria, our neighboring country, we have a world expert in this field of psychoneuroimmunology, and his name is Christian Schubert. He's an immunologist and medical doctor and a professor at the Institute of Psychoneuroimmunology at Innsbruck University in Austria and the publisher of a textbook that is the main reference book at the moment in this field. And I brought a very powerful sentence from this book to you today, where he says, there is no difference between our feelings and our immune system. Well, this is a phrase that you can meditate on. Imagine that your immune system is a part of your mind. It's just the physical part that checks in your physical body all the time what belongs to you and what does not belong to you. It's the barrier between yourself and the, the world outside you. It constantly tries to protect yourself and to defend everything that does not belong to you. And it's intimately connected to your beliefs and to your thoughts and to your emotions. In fact, we know today that every emotion with the blinking of an eye is expressed in a chemical reaction in the brain and these chemicals interact with the surface uh, receptors on our immune cells and in the blinking of the eye, uh, an emotion affects our immune system. Studies that are published in Christian Schubert's book and in other books about psychoneuroimmunology have revealed that Things like watching a horrifying movie for an hour and a half drastically changes the power and the, uh, the quality of, of one's immune system. Or on the other side, watching something uplifting like uh, a beautiful movie, movie about life and, and uh, family life or nature or something that lifts up your spirit uh, can change the immune system uh, significantly already Dr. Henning, you got mute. Uh, please unmute, please. Yeah, 
No. Am I online again? Yeah. Good. Sorry. Um, what was the last phrase? Was it? Uh, did it go through what I said just about watching movies and uh, how it affects the immune system? Yes. And uh, on an e even deeper level, of course, meditation or practicing yoga that changes your, your breath and your mindset will affect your immune system. Everything that changes our mindset and our emotions to the positive will have a positive impact also on our immune system. And the same is true for things that suppress our mood and our mindset. This also will have a consequence on our immune system. So, but the immune system is not only connected to feelings and mind, it's also connected to the bioterrain. And the bioterrain are all the chemical processes in our body that we need to look a little deeper. So it's immune system connected to both sides, mind and, and spirit, but also the biochemistry of our body. As long as we are in balance, uh, the terrain in my drawing here is yellow, supporting life, supporting vitality, supporting uh, the prana flow to nourish our physical body. But uh, modern life is challenging. And now follow me through the factors that can block the flow of prana, that can block the flow of vitality through our body. And the first uh, quality that I will uh, mention here that turns the field uh, into a more uh, pathological direction, into a direction that allows diseases, is what we call psychomental stress. Psychomental stress is a word that everybody understands today, but it has many, many dimensions. And one of these dimensions that I want to mention here in this special audience interested in spiritual questions is the relation between me and myself. In yoga philosophy, we talk about two relationships that we can have. We talk about yama, the relationship between me and the world. But we also talk about niyama, the relationship that I have to myself. And modern life is stressful because my relationship to the world and to myself has changed in a way that causes inner conflicts. So as important as it is to detoxify the body from toxins that we inhale or get from, from pesticides and, and environmental uh, pollution, as important is it to look for spiritual toxins, for emotional toxins that interfere with my relationship with myself or the relationship uh, that I have with my fellow men around me. Um, amongst the, the many ideas and, and tools that I give my, my patients and guests on their healing journey is to write a list about their inner conflicts and to be very particular with it. What stresses you? What does stress mean in your life? And please sit down and write down a list of things that you are not in harmony with that stress you because you have to know what stresses you in order to change it. And I found out that the Niyama aspects, the relationship that I have with myself are the biggest issues today and that people are not, uh, not used any longer to even have this question and to work on it. That's why they need to hear it from time to time from somebody from outside. What is your relationship to yourself? Can you accept yourself? How about self-love, true self-love? The message we learned from Anita Morjani, the author of the world-famous book, Dying to Be Me. If you take the message that she gave to mankind, uh, for me, it's two things, to work with your fear issues, and to work with your relationship to yourself and practice self-love. So stress was the first field factor, maybe the deepest. And if you ask me, probably the most important one in our time. But it's not the only one, there are others. 
So we have field factors like unhealthy gut flora. Unfortunately, the quality of our gut flora that we also called microbiome is not the best any longer. Uh, we should be born with a healthy microbiome and the food we eat and the life we live should keep our microbiome in a healthy balance so that the bacteria within us that, by the way, outnumber the number of cells that we have in our body and produce hormones and produce uh, neurochemicals that interact with our mindset and our feelings. So it's in constant exchange with all the systems of our body, our microbiome. Um, and of course, last but not least, in constant contact with our immune system, uh, microbiome should be something that we care for uh, by eating the right food, by eating fermented food, by eating uh, raw food that gives us the bacteria that we need. And if a disease becomes manifest, it's worthwhile checking the microbiome and finding uh, the bacteria that we miss so we can pick the right ones in form of probi probiotics or fermented food to replace what we have lost. Another aspect is uh, blood sugar uh, that uh, is maybe the most important uh, change of food in modern civilizations the last hundred years from being non-existent on the food list 100, 150 years ago, refined white sugar. It is now one of the, the biggest components of, of the unhealthy food of modern man. Uh, in average, uh, people eat up to 100 kilogram refined white sugar a year. These are numbers uh, for the United States. Europe is not much better. And I wonder how it is in, in India. Maybe people are still smarter in India and do not consume so much white sugar. Um, but white sugar is, of course, something we need to reduce in our diet in order uh, to stay healthy because sugar uh, starts to uh, uh, the production and the release of insulin and insulin and the insulin-like growth factors that come along with insulin stimulate the growth of cancer. Um, Another field factor I want to, to look at is water. Something very, very simple, but so important. We all drink or have a, a risk to drink too little water. We should drink uh, between two and three liters of fresh, pure water a day, depending on our body weight. And uh, water carries life. Water carries all the biochemical reactions for uh, the supply of food and energy for ourselves, but also for the detoxification. And step by step, uh, the map is filled with the other factors like nutritional deficiencies, to mention a few uh, uh, vitamins or minerals that are on the deficiency list uh, of almost every country today. It's vitamin D, it's selenium, it's iodine, it's zinc. Um, many women lack uh, iron because of the, the female um, loss of, of iron every day, every uh, month, sorry, with the menstrual period. Women are at uh, the risk zone of, of having too, too little iron. And it was found that risk, uh, iron deficiency is one of the many risk factors, for instance, uh, for breast cancer. Vitamin D, that I already mentioned, uh, has an enormous impact on the risk profile for cancer. Um, just one number, if you have the right vitamin D level in your body, the risk to develop colon cancer is 50% compared to the 100% risk uh, in the general population. That shows you how important uh, vitamin D supplementation is if you don't eat it uh, from natural sources, which is not so easy to get enough. Uh, in countries that are blessed with uh, sunshine, uh, people protect themselves and stay in, inside the house and cover their skin to not be skin burned. And that's why they don't develop uh, enough uh, uh, vitamin D. And in the northern or southern hemisphere in the countries uh, that have long winter periods, like in Germany, we lack uh, sunlight and, and do not produce vitamin D from October to uh, February, March. That's why our population suffers from uh, epidemic vitamin D deficiency in the dark period of the year and everybody needs to supplement it. 
it has not only an impact to our uh, bone health and uh, the, for uh, our skeleton. No, it is very, very important for our immune system and especially for the defense against cancer. And now, uh, step by step, uh, the map is completed so that we all together find 12 factors um, that I could speak for hours about. So uh, this lecture is an introduction. And for those who want to learn more uh, of these uh, 12 factors, uh, I can tell you that the book that I wrote uh, on complementary oncology will be published and printed in the fall of this year. So in November, I'm looking forward to having the book and share it with the world holistic uh, uh, oncology that will guide you through these 12 factors uh, in great detail uh, on more than 350 pages. So please uh, understand that uh, this lecture cannot cover all the tiniest uh, aspects of it, but it gives you an overview. And from there, you can dive in into the uh, details. Toxicity, of course, a very important issue. We inhale fumes, we inhale uh, chemicals from, from uh, our surroundings. Uh, and um, there is an institute in Canada, uh, in Halifax, Nova Scotia, that has found that can the cancer risk today in modern societies does not come from one toxin. It uh, comes from the cocktail of many, many uh, toxins in small amounts. So it's not so easy to avoid it because it's everywhere. So the key is to keep the body's detox system uh, uh, vital and strong by opening the four gates that our body has to release toxins. And these four gates are our bowel movements, the production of urine, sweat, and breath. So please work on these four detoxification systems that you have regular bowel movements, that you drink enough water to, to excrete the toxins through your kidneys and through the production of urine, that you work with your breath and do the pranayama exercises to breathe out deeply. Modern man breathes too shallowly so we don't get rid of the waste product that we produce in every second that is called carbon dioxide. Shallow breathing does not take away the carbon dioxide and adds acidity to the body, one of the field factors over acidity and low pH. If you have infections um, and they might not produce so obvious symptoms, you need to find them and clean them up. Uh, typical examples for chronic infections uh, that uh, I ask you to look for is everything in your mouth, in your gums, and if you have uh, teeth that were treated with a root canal filling, please ask your dentist regularly to check the root canals and make sure you don't carry chronic infections in your jaws. Those can spoil your immune system by sending out inflammatory signals uh, and misleading your immune system. Silent inflammation, uh, top one factor here on my map, uh, up uh, on, on, on top of the, uh, the, this graph, is um, the silent motor behind all modern diseases that uh, we are challenged with, high blood pressure, diabetes, um, obesity, depression, all the autoimmune diseases, the allergies are all triggered by silent inflammation. And uh, silent inflammation doesn't feel it is silent, it's behind the curtain. You need to do special uh, laboratory tests like high sensitivity CRP, or if you have a doctor that uses a dark field microscope, you can look uh, at living blood cells and finding out whether they are in a, a state of silent inflammation, but your body doesn't send you any signals. Nevertheless, it is of utmost importance to reduce everything that is inflammation in our body. Um, modern lifestyle, the food we eat, the stress, we put on our shoulders makes the body silently inflamed. And silent inflammation is what changes the immune system's um, ability to find cancer and fight it because silent inflammation shields the tumor from immune attack. So if you want to know why your immune system or why somebody's immune system does not attack an existing uh, uh, lump of cancer cells, 
The answer is, for instance, there is too much inflammation and inflammation makes the immune system blind for finding and attacking cancer. So all the traditional anti-cancer herbs and remedies that we have like turmeric, like ginger, like uh, uh, um, proteolytic enzymes in papaya, or even uh, the omega-3 fatty acid uh, is an anti-inflammatory uh, uh, work that these wonderful herbs and food items do. Uh, and, and through the anti-inflammatory pathway, they reduce the cancer risk. Uh, there is another factor called mitochondrial damage, uh, which is the view angle of a modern uh, biochemist or cellular biologist. And I have this little cell model and show it to my patients. Uh, there is the nucleus with the genes and there's the cell membrane. And inside our cells, we have these energy plants called mitochondria. In this model, it's this red bean-like structure. And cells contain up to many hundred mitochondria and that's where the body produces its energy. Scientists have found out that cancer cells have severely damaged mitochondria and the, the production of energy in a cancer cell has gone down to 1 18th of the production of energy in a healthy cell. So this is one way how we can understand uh, why a cancer cell behaves so strangely. It has literally no energy to behave nicely. It has to go into an emergency surviving program, which is the cancerous program that was hidden uh, as a possibility in the genes of the cell and when the conditions, take these 12 field factor conditions, if these conditions have changed uh, to a certain level, the, the cell switches on an emergency surviving program called cancer because there is no energy to behave uh, in, a, in a developed way so that the cell can serve the organism. And by switching the energy pathway into this cancerous mode, the cell becomes uh, an autonomous autistic cell that does not care for the health of the organism any longer. No, it tries to survive as the single cell it is, very egoistic and autistic, only looking for itself. And isn't that a wonderful picture uh, that nature shows us how uh, the body becomes strange to the spirit that lives within it when cancer becomes a manifest disease parts of the body fall out of the integrity of the, the rest of the organism and do not serve any longer the spirit that lives within it. So we need to work on both sides. We need to make the body more our own body and penetrate it with our individual spirituality. But we also need to work on the spiritual level with ourselves and the relationship that we have to our true inner nature, the niyama aspect. Uh, in yoga philosophy. Because the cell shows us what happens if we lose this contact to ourselves and the body becomes more foreign. So I guess this was the, the um, uh, a, a few words uh, about every aspect here in my 12-fold uh, cancer attracting field map. And now let's try to remove it step by step. Yeah, we, to get rid of the toxins, we need to activate uh, the um, uh, detoxification pathways. Remember, bowel movements, excretion of fluids by drinking enough water, breathing exercises, pranayama, and physical activity uh, that causes us to sweat. And in a medical setup, sweat therapy is heat therapy, it's fever therapy, uh, is one of the clinical aspects that I will show you a little later. Nutritional abundance, yeah? we need to find out the deficiencies and provide the organism with all the 80, 90 different uh, nutrients that we need, the vitamins, the minerals, the trace elements, uh, the fatty acids, and that's the nutritional uh, uh, way of, of uh, nutritional medicine. We need to drink an abundance of fresh water, pure, pure water. If you live close to a fountain and that is not so common any longer, you are blessed and can, can drink natural water. If you live in a big city, please make sure you use a good filter uh, with a ceramic or, or charcoal filter and uh, vitalize your water by boiling it or 
you can put crystals inside uh, your jar with with uh, fresh water to uh, charge it with the the power of of quartz um, and you can find a lot of it, ideas and books on on water and how to improve the water quality we use special whirlers that uh, force water to go through a spiral um, that charge uh, the energy uh, of of the water molecules Very interesting side chapter how to supercharge water and how to clean it make sure you drink enough water between for an adult in average two and a half liters up to three three liters a day care for oxygen and learn how to breathe deeply and now i preach to the choir i speak in front of an indian audience that uh, teaches the world how to breathe properly in in yoga and prana yoga exercises i can only say continue with it carry on and learn and practice uh, healthy breathing Look for a healthy gut flora, make a, a microbiome test and find uh, the bacteria uh, that are missing in your body. Drink uh, fermented uh, products. Uh, every country has its, its speciality. In Germany, we have sauerkraut, which is cabbage that is fermented naturally and gives us a lot of healthy lactobacilli and bifidobacilli. Um, I know in India, you have all kinds of mixed of pickles, uh, uh, fermented veggies. Uh, in some countries, they, they eat uh, chimchi, which is a fermented uh, 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 vegetable product, um, and found out the, the fermented treasures of your uh, local, uh, uh, local kitchen. And on top of it, you can use probiotics based on a, on a microbiome analysis. Look for effective stress management. Wow, I wish I had another hour to just speak about that. The key words that I can recommend you to work with is um, meditation, relaxation exercises, practice yoga with its various uh, disciplines of, of, of um, um, body exercises, breathing exercises, but also mental exercises, um, and work with mindfulness and work with forgiveness. Um, I came to learn that Forgiveness is very, very important, is existential in my life. I don't want to carry the grudge of all the stories that I have gone through, and I need to detoxify my mind from time to time by practicing uh, radical forgiveness. And I, I teach and use the techniques of mindfulness in my life and show my guests how they can use uh, the principles of mindfulness, we work with uh, the books of John Kabat-Zinn and uh, teach the seven principles uh, that he defines in his books like uh, non-judgmental thinking, uh, beginner's mind, um, practicing thankfulness and, and, um, and more. So a warm recommendation to the audience to um, work with mindfulness uh, techniques to balance stress in your life. The high blood sugar, high insulin component uh, is uh, taken care of with a low sugar diet that you eat a moderate amount of, of carbs a day. Our recommendation is to not eat more than 100 grams of carbs a day. And the carbs we eat should be slow carbs and not fast carbs. On our website, there is our food uh, guideline you can order it from uh, my secretary. It's uh, about 40 pages uh, on healthy food. Uh, we call it the Arcadia diet. Um, the mitochondrial function can be strengthened and empowered by food, water, anti-inflammatory herbs, but also uh, modern devices like PEMF, pulsed electromagnetic frequency devices that directly charge uh, the mitochondria inside our cells. Um, another spiritual aspect of mitochondrial uh, biology is that what scientists tell us what is going on in the mitochondrion is at the end of all the complicated biochemical reactions, the flow of energy, it's the flow of electrons that constantly, constantly uh, produces an energy molecule that we call ATP, adenosine 3-phosphate. And 
A stunning point for me is that it is exactly what is described in the spiritual concepts of Ayurvedic medicine or traditional Chinese medicine or spiritual medicine around the globe. It's about the flow of energy. So biochemists tell us that what is important is, is the flow of energy in our mitochondria and they speak about electrons, but an electron is, is a particle without any uh, weight. It's pure energy. So this is the connection between um, biochemical science and spiritual science. It's moving energy that is the essence of life and that we need to care for. Um, the overacidity that is the product of uh, unhealthy diet and, and uh, Western world lifestyle with too much stress and too little sleep and too much sugar and too much alcohol and too much white flour products need to be balanced with an alkaline diet. And an alkaline diet is mostly a plant-based diet um, with a lot of fresh components, um, smoothies, uh, vegetable juices, but also raw food, you know, a little bit of cooked food, uh, a mixture of various types of, of uh, plant-based food that balances uh, the uh, acidic part of our uh, nutrition, which is uh, from the animal products that we need from time to time. If you ask me, there is a point uh, for uh, certain items that we can take from the world of animals. Um, of course, this is a huge topic. Uh, I refer to my uh, book on nutritional medicine and, and the, the, the food guideline of the Arcadia diet. The key word again is balance. Alkalinity and acidity should, need, uh, should be in balance. And uh, it's, it's alkalinity that is missing in, in a body that develops cancer. So work more on your uh, alkalinity. Clean the uh, infections and work on your infection defense and reduce inflammation on all levels. These are the 12 uh, vitality factors uh, that we work with. And here again uh, is the, uh, the summary of the 12 uh, therapy aspects. I don't know how much time I have left for uh, the three um, anti-cancer therapies. Um, maybe one picture from fever therapy on, at Arcadia Clinic, we work with fever therapy and we ask our patients to make a spontaneous uh, intuitive drawing before and after the therapy. And this picture shows you what the patient drew just before she went into the hyperthermia device and was uh, treated with two hours of uh, moderate fever. And it expresses something. It's an intuitive, spontaneous drawing. And look how the picture uh, was one hour after fever therapy, same patient. So it shows something what fever can do. Not only uh, does it detoxify the body and raise circulation and immune function, but it also harmonizes obviously um, the mindset of the patient, very um, interestingly expressed in these two drawings. So, the end of my uh, lecture is about the three uh, smart ways we attack cancer. And I make this short. This is the clinical approach that we work with uh, at Arcadia Clinic. And we refer to Hippocrates, uh, our grandmaster in Greek ancient uh, philosophy and medicine, who says two things apply to the treatment of the disease, benefit or at least do no harm. And I believe that more oncologists uh, would need to listen to Hippocrates uh, when he said, at least do no harm to the patient. Um, so um, Hippocrates is uh, like, like Patanjali in, in, in yoga philosophy. Uh, Hippocrates is, is uh, our um, teacher from ancient Greek philosophy. And by following his ideas uh, of not doing harm to the body, we use three smart ways to attack cancer. And um, the first is uh, called um, insulin and low dose chemotherapy. So we lower the uh, blood sugar by injecting a tiny little uh, amount of insulin right into the uh, bloodstream. And that makes cancer cells uh, open for the uh, treatment of, of anti-cancer drugs and we use botanical anti-cancer drugs as long as possible. 
Uh, and those are injectable turmeric, injectable sugar oil from ginger, injectable apricot kernel extract, so-called amygdalin, um, and injectable boswellia extract from frankincense. If the cancerous masses are larger, we have learned that we sometimes even need synthetic drugs to buy time and get a chance to work on the terrain uh, and block cancer growth uh, as fast as possible. And in that case, we use uh, uh, synthetic chemotherapy drugs in a dosage of between 15 and maximum 25% together with insulin. Again, insulin uh, lowers blood sugar and low blood sugar opens the cell membrane uh, of cancer cells for uh, the, the drugs that we inject a few minutes later. Uh, insulin low-dose chemotherapy was developed in Mexico in the 1930s by a military surgeon called Dr. Garcia Perez, and his grandson with the same name uh, is the president of the Academy of Insulin Potentized Therapy, and I learned IPT uh, from Dr. Garcia Perez III, the, the grandson of the inventor, and ever since we started with it, we found that this is a, a good strategy to reduce cancerous masses in advanced stages of cancer without doing too much harm to the body. The second smart therapy that we use is uh, photodynamic therapy. Um, let me show you the slide here for uh, insulin potentiation. It's insulin and then a drug in this picture, it's curcumin from uh, uh, turmeric uh, and then when curcumin is given, we close the cell membranes by injecting a little bit of sugar. So we open it by lowering sugar, we deliver the drug uh, in low sugar circumstances, and we close the cell membrane by injecting a little bit of glucose. This is the principle of insulin potentiation therapy. Um, photodynamic therapy uses two elements. Number one, a photosensitive drug, in this case, uh, uh, the, chat, the map shows you uh, uh, a drug made out of grass that contains chlorophyll. The name of the drug is chlorine E6. And injected as it is, it's a harmless non-toxic drug with a lot of chlorophyll and deep green color. And um, some 20 years ago, one found out, scientists found out that cancer cells have a special transport mechanism for chlorophyll and when you inject it into the bloodstream after three hours, they accumulate chlorophyll uh, so that cancer cells are charged with chlorophyll about two to three hours after the injection. And if you use a laser rod of the, la the right la light wavelength, uh, in this case, it's red laser light uh, with a wavelength of 665 nanometers and shine red laser energy uh, with this wavelength on the tumor that is charged with uh, uh, chlorophyll, you start a chemical reaction that produces a lot of oxygen. In fact, so-called free oxygen radicals. Uh, and this reaction only happens in the places that have accumulated chlorophyll, and that is the cancer. So uh, we inject the chlorophyll, we wait two to three hours, and then we put a laser rod uh, right into the tumor and shine red laser light for about 20 minutes on the tumor. And in these 20 minutes, the production of free radical, uh, um, free oxygen radicals uh, kills the cells in the vicinity of the laser rod. Approximately three to four centimeters is uh, uh, around the laser is what we can expect to be destroyed after the therapy. And uh, after 20 minutes, we switch off the lamp and no harmful uh, substances are produced any longer and the existence of these free radicals that are produced is in the fraction of some seconds so there are no toxic leftovers. Um, if you go a little deeper into the biochemical reaction that, that this uh, photodynamic therapy is based on, it's again the flow of energy. It works with energy. Free, ex free radicals are molecules that carry a lot of electrons to the, to the uh, uh, place where you want to work with them. So we can say we destroy cancer with energy. We destroy cancer with the flow of electrons uh, and use light and chlorophyll from nature. This is something we use in the treatment of early stages of breast cancer. In other clinics, it can be used uh, in other parts, but you need a, uh, an operating theater to 
uh, to uh, use it for internal organs. And that is not what we do at our clinic. We are not surgeons. We do not have an operating theater, but we cooperate uh, with doctors who use it in the ENT uh, region. There is an ENT professor that works close to our clinic that we refer to in cases of ENT tumors. And there's even uh, a prostate specialist and the lung clinic that works with PDT in the vicinity of our clinic. And the third smart way uh, to attack cancer is by using radio waves that um, overheat the tumor with harmless electromagnetic waves in the spectrum of 13.56 megahertz. That's a uh, short wave radio bandwidth. So instead of using gamma rays, which is the realm of traditional uh, radiotherapy, we use waves that are much slower, um, but less harmful and overheat the tumor. Um, as a standalone therapy, it is not strong enough. Overheating cancer cells to a temperature around 43, 44 centigrade is still not strong enough to kill cancers only with heat, but it amplifies uh, the anti-cancer effect of all other therapies that you um, put around. So hypothermia is a treatment enhancement, this local hypothermia is a treatment enhancement for parallel given anti-cancer drugs uh, like the infusions with high dosage vitamin C, turmeric, ginger, frankincense, uh, apricot kernel extract, or IPT. So we add it uh, to our program and have learned that, that it gives a valuable uh, benefit uh, by making the chemical reaction faster and stronger. And this was the anti-cancer, smart anti-cancer triad, insulin potentiation therapy, photodynamic therapy, and radio wave heat. So thank you. That was my, my lecture on the 12 field factors and the three smart ways to attack cancer without doing harm to the body. And um, that was the first, first part of, of uh, what we wanted to do today. I know there is now possibilities, uh, possibility for answering questions and that you ask me to close eventually with the meditation. So I give the word back to Dr. Sandeep and Dr. Ranjan. Thank Dr. you. Henning, uh, Dr. Henning, uh, you mentioned the uh, hyperthermia. So can you share more about hyperthermia concept? Yep. Hypothermia is probably the oldest tool that medical doctors have used to treat diseases. It is already mentioned uh, in uh, antique medicine at the time of Hippocrates, who once said, give me the power uh, to uh, create fever and I will cure all the diseases for you. So it's the fire that uh, activates the self-healing system. In modern time, we use it in two different ways. Uh, we use it as whole body hypothermia, which is the procedure to um, treat the patient with a body temperature that is equivalent to what a healthy organism would uh, produce in temperature from a, a virus infection, which is around 39.5 up to 40 grade, uh, degrees centigrade under controlled circumstances. We use devices uh, with infrared lamps uh, and a nurse sits next to the patient, taking care of the patient's pulse rate and heart function with an ECG. Uh, we uh, provide the patient with oxygen throughout the entire procedure. And it takes up to two hours <clears throat> to reach that level and to stay on the plateau of 39.5 up to 40 degrees centigrade. We give parallel infusions with our botanical anti-cancer drugs, vitamin C, turmeric, shogaol, frankincense, um, and... You can find many studies, publications that show you what happens when the body is in this elevated energy uh, state of fever. Uh, we enhance uh, detoxification by, by producing a lot of sweat. We enhance the immune function. Uh, we stimulate um, uh, microcirculation and circulation of the drugs that we uh, inject parallel. Uh, we have a deeper penetration of the drugs in, in, into tumorous areas. And we also work on the balance in the mind. Uh, it has an enormous anti-stress effect once you have 
gone through it. It's a little stressful uh, for some patients to go through fever. They're not used any longer to have uh, fever temperatures in their body. But when they have done it uh, in the afternoon and uh, the day after, they feel in general uh, that their stress level has come down quite a bit. And this is what we do once a week, whole body hyperthermia. You could use this principle even in a simpler way by uh, 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 using a infrared sauna device that you can buy for relatively little money. Um, and if you have somebody that looks uh, after you, in, in, you can even do it in your uh, home environment. Of course, a little less sophisticated compared to the way we do it at our clinic, but the principle can be used even at home by using an infrared sauna. The other way <coughs> we use hyperthermia uh, requires very special devices. I just showed you um, the, um, the uh, hyperthermia device here. Let me, uh, let me show you the slide again. Mm. This uh, is a hyperthermia device that is many, oops, I was too fast. It can stay here. It, uh, that it, you cannot buy uh, in general uh, uh, at home. Uh, the cost of a device like that is around 150,000 euros and you need to know how to use it. It's more uh, like a radiology device uh, for a clinic. And uh, we use it one hour per treatment for the four days a week. So we expose the cancerous area like the liver or the lymph node metastasis or the primary tumor in the prostate, in the, in the breast, wherever it is. We expose this tumor for one hour of radio waves. And we know from, from published studies that the temperature that the, the tumorous uh, lump uh, will develop eventually is in the round between 43 and 44 degrees centigrade. And a lot of interesting uh, biological uh, events happen when the tumor is on that level. It fills books with hundreds of pages how tumor cells get stressed from local hyperthermia. They, um, it starts apoptosis. It sensitizes, uh, apoptosis is the natural cell death uh, that cancer cells have lost. Uh, so you can start uh, the, the, the apoptosis mechanism again by exposing cells in the, to that temperature. And most of all, you have a good synergy effect uh, if you use uh, other drugs in combination with local hypothermia. Henning, uh, can you share uh, one or two case studies, uh, the patient you are treated in, at the uh, stage three or stage four cancer? And before that, yes. can you stop, stop the screen sharing so that we can yep, 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 yep. see your full uh, face. Stop the screen sharing. Am I back to full screen again now? 